Welcome once again to church at Heart Mountain from all around the world. This is Heart Mountain Ministries, and I am Pastor Rob Fisk, and I'm so excited to be on this series. According to Sun Tzu, the 25-year, to, to it, I'll get it right, 2,500 years ago, a Chinese general who won war after war, and he gave the advice that if you know yourself and you know the enemy, you'll never lose. And so we've taught about knowing who we are in Christ, and last week I started who is our enemy and you need to i can't go back and do the whole thing again today so i'm going to go on to the next section but you really need to go back and watch know your enemy part one powerful stuff it'll give you victory and joy in your life yes it will so today we're going to go on and talk about you know our enemy obviously is satan the devil the great dragon he's got all kinds of names lucifer he's a fallen angel and he is also the one who tempts. Now, I'm going to give you some great scriptures today, and I want you to believe the scriptures and not necessarily your tradition or the things you've been taught or the things you've thought. We really need, I heard one preacher say recently, the biggest battle is for Christians to renew their minds and believe that the Bible is true and act like it. It'll change everything in your life. <laughs> yes, it will. So who tempts us? Is it God? Absolutely no. It's our enemy. And today, I'm going to spend most of the time, I think, uh, talking about the ways he tempts. Because I taught this when we first started uh, the ministry, and the audio was terrible. Anyway, and so it comes up now. It really is important, because if you know the three big things that Satan does to tempt you, you'll know to watch out for them, and you'll know how to say no, and you'll win, and you won't fall into these traps, you know, adultery, or, you know, spending more money than you can afford to spend. I'll show you how this works here in a moment. But turn if you would please to James 1.13. It says, let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. So God is not the tempter. Uh, Satan is. And this is so interesting. Uh, I used these two years ago. And it's back when I didn't have the fancy dancy video program. But you know what? It really helps to see sometimes there are three major temptations that Satan uses. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Let's say it again. The lust of the flesh, I'll get it up here. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, these are Satan's big three, and the pride of life. Now, this is so amazing because you'll see this all through the Bible. I mean, thousands of years between. Uh, mentions of these temptations but they're always the same thing and they're always in order so learn these things it'll help you so much lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of life all right let's go back to genesis the book of beginnings adam and his wife were tempted with these three things you're going to be tempted with these three things jesus was tempted with these three things and he defeated the devil we'll show you how and then but adam and his wife fell so a lot of reading here about six verses for sure so follow with me genesis 3 1 it says now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the lord god had made and he said to the woman did god really say stop for a moment that's one of the things Satan does very, very well. He deceives or he casts doubt. Did God really say that? You know, th that scripture is really not for you. That was just for the Jews. Or, you know, you don't have any power over me, says the devil. Only the apostles did. <laughs> oh, yeah? Jesus died not just for the apostles, but for us. And he said, I give all authority unto you. Go and make disciples of all nations. And that includes all of us. So, uh, back to verse, we just finished verse 1. Did God really say, you must not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, 
We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you'll die. And then here Satan has been deceiving and planting doubt, and now he's flat out going to lie. Like I mentioned last week, he's called a liar, the father of lies. And here's something that really helps. When you start to become fearful, oh no, this is going to happen. It's a lie. Satan is only, he's, it's all he can do is lie. So just know that the opposite is true. You are going to make it. God is working on your behalf. Jesus is on the throne interceding for you every day. You're going to make it in Jesus' name. So, uh, verse 4, here comes Satan flat out lying. You will not surely die. God said he would. Satan says, y- y- you're not going to die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat, your eyes will be opened, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw, what did she see? That the fruit of the tree was good for food, temptation number one, the lust of the flesh. Always in this order, it's amazing. And pleasing to the eye, temptation number two, the lust of the eyes. And also desirable for gaining wisdom, the third temptation, the pride of life. And she fell. She took some and she ate it. And this is big. Look at the rest of the verse. She also gave some to her husband who was where? He was off at Walmart? No. (laughs) He was right there with her. And he ate also. Don't have time to get into that. But, you know, Satan was deceived. I mean, the woman was deceived and people put down women. No, 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 no. I think the man did the bigger sin because he was right there and he didn't stop her. So he committed treason by eating the fruit and doing what God told him not to. And all the powers that that Adam and his wife had were transferred to Satan. At that point, he became the God of this world. Now, thank God, Jesus came and destroyed him, took his power away. And now he's a defeated foe. All right. Turn now to John, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 4. This is where Jesus successfully resisted those same three temptations. Here we go, Luke 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan. And this is after his his baptism. And he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. Now he did drink. Stop for a second. If you are fasting sometime, God calls you to put aside food to focus your heart on him and fasting and prayer. Always drink water. I wasn't taught that. And so one time I fasted for, it was two or three days, and boy, my lips were cracked, my tongue wouldn't come off the roof of my mouth, and and nobody had taught me. So receive this teaching. It says Jesus was hungry. He didn't say he was thirsty. Amen? All right. So verse 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing. But when they were ended, he, that's Jesus, afterwards hungered. Yeah, he had a physical body like you and me, and he hungered. And the devil said to him, check this out, the same order. Satan has no new tricks. If you are the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. What temptation is that? Temptation number one, the lust of the flesh. Now, how did Jesus overcome? This is the same way you'll be able to overcome. Check it out. Jesus answered him saying, it is written. Stop again for a second. So it's the word of God that gives you the power. You speak the word of God against the enemy who's tempting you. And also in James, it said, uh, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Why? Because he's a defeated foe. And you use the word of God on him, boy, he can't take it. I love this one uh, meme I saw on Facebook. It said, when you get out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh, no, he's up again or she's up again. As you learn the word of God and learn your place, your position with God and how much he loves you and the authority he's given you, you'll beat the devil every time. Know your enemy. So how did Jesus overcome? Verse 4, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Bam! He overcame that temptation. And verse 5, And the devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this power 
will I give you in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. Again, stop just for a second. I was walking in the park years ago, pondering these verses, and I thought of when, you know, the, the demons would come out when Jesus cast them out with his word, and they'd say, have you come to torment us before the time, before the time, before the time? And then I realized that when God gave dominion to Adam and his wife, it was a lease. It was for not forever. It was for a set period of time. How long? Only God knows. You know, one day God will say, the father will reach over to Jesus and say, go bring our children home. The lease will be up and all power will revert back to God. So Satan is not going to rule forever. It's a powerful thing to realize and a comforting thing. All right. So he just, uh, Satan just showed Jesus all the uh, glory and power of the world. And verse seven, if you therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. What temptation is that? Lust of the eyes. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the king. Everybody wants to be top dog in this dog eat dog world. Well, you know what Jesus said? He that wants to be great, let him be the servant of all. And Jesus served. Oh, another teaching. Wonderful stuff. So temptation number two, the lust of the eyes. Jesus again answered with the word of God. You can too. Here we go. And Jesus answered and said to them, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Bam! Second temptation. Uh, he didn't bow to it. He overcame, and you can too. Uh, just an interesting thought. Knowing this, you can go into a store and you know they spend millions on the uh the sides of the aisles that they put up these beautiful displays and so forth and you walked in there looking for bread and milk and you see something oh, i've got to have that you know what that is lust of the flesh lust of the eyes know that it's coming before you go in the store that way you'll realize this is a temptation i don't have budget for that i don't need that Every time I go by a junkyard and see t cars piled up, I think every one of those were somebody's lust, their dream, and now they're just junk. The only thing that lasts, like I used to tell my kids, is the Word of God and Jesus and the love of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, uh, temptation number two, let's see. So let me read it again. Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, for you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Okay, here comes temptation number three. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you're the Son of God. Boy, he's really trying to get under Jesus' skin and make him doubt that he's even the Son of God. That's his job. That's what he does. He tries to make you doubt that you have any power, that you're a child of God, that you're worth anything. <laughs> You're worth so much, Jesus shed his blood to buy you. You're precious in his sight. All right. So he brought him to the temple. Uh, he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you're the Son of God, cast yourself down from here. For it is written, and now the devil tries to use the word of God. Let's stop again for a second. The devil will sometimes try to use the word of God against you, but he always leaves out a word or two or takes it out of context. That's why it's so important for you to know the word of God. Listen to teachings like this. And, you know, the beauty of YouTube is that, you know, uh, if you, if this is past time that we recorded part one, part two, part three, you can binge watch them all. You don't have to wait for the whole next week. It's an amazing thing. I had a uh, somebody write to me one time and they said, you know, I binge watched your sermons. And I thought that's just like Netflix binge watching. Go ahead. Learn the word of God. It's so important because Satan will quote some scriptures out of context and you need to know uh, if it is or isn't in context. So for it is written, verse 10, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they'll bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against the stone. That's temptation number three. Recognize it. The pride of life. The pride of life. All right. So Jesus answering him said, 
you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed for him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Man, you get really pumped up when you win a spiritual battle with Satan. And it says, there went out a fame of him, that's Jesus, throughout all the region. So, we saw the three temptations in the garden. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. We saw them right here with with Jesus. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And it's going to happen again in 1 John. So turn to 1 John 2, 16. It says, for all that is in the world, here it is, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Isn't that amazing? There it is in the same order. So the point is the enemy has no more tricks than that. You know, he's a liar. He's a deceiver. He plants doubt. And then he tries to tempt you with flesh and pride and uh, both are forms of flesh, number one and two. So know your enemy. Know your tactics. And you can watch for them and steer clear of Satan's traps. So lack of knowledge of the big three temptations has ruined more family budgets than you can imagine. It has ruined marriages. A preacher once said, quite often these temptations of the flesh begin with a simple look or a quick glance. And that's all it takes for Satan to plant the seed of temptation in your hearts and in your minds. More marriages would be together today if people knew about the big three. But now you do. Like Jesus, you can overcome Satan by speaking the word and making choices to obey and love God instead of yield to temptations. This will save you so much grief. Let me pray for you, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray that you'd give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Open our eyes that we might see the three temptations, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, that we might avoid them, that we might resist them, that we might stay on that victory walk with Jesus and not fall. I pray for the people to receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, it's really important. You can help spread the gospel. You can work together with me by sharing this video. And you probably want to go back and watch it again so you get that word in your heart. But write to us and tell us what has happened as you've learned these things. Give us some testimonies of how you've resisted the devil by knowing the great temptations, knowing his tactics. And then go to our website if you want to. And that way you can find out all about the ministry. You can support the ministry as you're led. And it's just a beautiful thing. So listen, I've got so much more. I don't know if it'll be three or four teachings. We'll find out. But keep coming back. And if you're watching this after all four or three have been put out there, you can binge watch them all, just one after the other. Listen, I love you. I'm so excited to be teaching you this. You're going to find victory because Jesus came to bring life and give it to you more abundantly.